I think you'll see that the following argument still arrives at the same inescapable conclusion. So here's the argument. You can think of it in terms of row thinking versus column thinking. Our future <coughs> will fall roughly in one of these four boxes. Now, because climate change may or may not be real, we cannot know for certain which row the future will lie in. What we can know for certain, because we control it, is which column the future will lie in. So it's a bit like buying a lottery ticket. You buy lottery ticket A or ticket B, and then you sit back and wait to see what the laws of physics deal out as a result on your ticket. So let's say we pick lottery ticket A. At that point, we're determining that our future lies somewhere between a global economic depression and a different but livable world. So here's a scenario where we made a mistake. We acted when we didn't need to. And here's the cost of that mistake, a global economic depression. This is the risk associated with buying lottery ticket A. Well, that sounds like a pretty scary risk, so let's see if we have a better option over here on lottery ticket B. If we pick column B, and it turns out to be the right choice, then hey presto, we're happy. And if it turns out to be a mistake, what would the cost of that mistake be? The end of the world? Well, the end of the world as we know it, the globe will still be here, humans will still be here, the species will survive, but this is a very different, much more hostile place. This is the risk associated with picking column B, whether by deliberate choice or, and here's the scary part, by default of inaction because we were busy debating, trying to guess which row the future would land in. Notice that this cost down here, this consequent, incorporates the threat to the economy that this one up here does but with some added bonus features as well. Also, it gets worse than that because in the last five years, we've learned that it's possible, it's plausible, that this might happen abruptly in a very short time period, perhaps as short as a decade or two. So we're not just talking abstract grandchildren here, we're talking you and me.